the veiled curtain. I've been here once or twice before, perhaps even a handful of times. It's all a bit hazy. Ah yes, I know those curtains. I crane my neck and catch my blurred reflection in the mirror on the bedside locker. A stabbing sensation lumbers across my forehead. Could be the remnants of a headache or the bones of the voice of reason. The question as to the whereabouts of my shirt departs my mind almost as soon as it enters, when I realise I'm not alone. The poison pulls me unceremoniously towards the darkness, but that strange melody keeps bringing me back. Is that Sinead O'Connor? Even to my inebriated ear, that voice is unmistakable. Oddly though, her lyrics are carried around the room by Rastafari music, and it sounds absolutely terrible. So bad that it starts to sober me up. I suppose I should be thankful for it then, because here I am, back in your room. You're kneeling opposite me in a trance, head bent towards your chest, blonde hair swaying to and fro. Do you even know I'm here? I break the silence between us with a barely decipherable slurred whisper. This album is fucking amazing. Jesus, the lies we tell while under the spell. You emerge from your stupor, eyes bloodshot and glazed, and force a weak smile. I don't know if you recognise me, it's as if you're looking through me. And then, with mouth agape, you lean in. I can still taste it, the cardian silk-cut purple. You only smoke when you drink. And just like before, we begin to wrestle our way through a bout of uncoordinated foolishness. I take my leave soon after you pass out grip the banister, shuffle downstairs and collapse into my own bed before rising a couple of hours later to join you at the breakfast table with the others as if nothing happened. Dance in the merry dance. I sip my coffee awkwardly trying to make it seem like any other morning, wanting desperately to say something. I want to but I'm afraid. I was afraid from the get-go on that very first day I moved in when you asked if I wanted to take a walk. We need milk, you said. Sure, I said, trembling. I floated, hanging on your every word, each silky smooth syllable rising in the Sheikhi mountains, flowing majestically with sweetness and charm. And at times they carried a sting, which I admired. You told it like it was. I was thinking like it was. Like how far out of my league you were. Smart, beautiful, sharp as a blade, and slightly older. The fact that you showed an interest baffled my deeply insecure and naive young self. In truth, I always found you slightly intimidating, but in an endearing way. I would have gladly strolled all the way to Killarney with you from out that day. First semester came and went, and soon after our latest escapade, we found ourselves gathered together in the living room. I'm not quite sure what exactly we were doing, probably watching some mind-numbing shite on TV, procrastinating doing what students did best. Just another uneventful weeknight, until one of the others asked about your impending male visitor. I sensed a slight change in the air, but stupidly opened my mouth regardless and inquired as to his identity, thinking perhaps it might have been a brother you'd failed to mention. Fucking idiot. I had no idea. My face burned scarlet and I could instantly feel the sympathetic stares. Jesus, did you all know? As far as I was aware, the other girls didn't know about us. But then again, you were all friends, classmates. We all lived under one roof, and as the old adage goes, they didn't come down in the last shower. I can't recall how many weeks passed before I departed that house, and that town forever. It wasn't long after I found out. I can't even recall if we said goodbye to each other. No, that's a lie. I can, and we didn't. Did any of it merit a goodbye though? There were certainly moments of vulnerability, of connection, that suggested something real, but they were mere snippets concealed under a collection of veiled interactions. It was exhilarating though, wasn't it? A part of me sometimes wonders what you're up to now, how you're doing, which part of this world you're calling home, all these years later. Another part of me thinks at times how nice it would be to take another walk, and have an honest conversation. To tell you that I liked you a lot. To tell you that as petrified as I was, I never wanted us to have to use alcohol to get close to each other. 
to tell you that I wish you had told me sooner, but I understand. To tell you that you're an incredible person and that you have changed my perspective of the world. To tell you that whatever it was, I'm grateful for it. To tell you that you made a mistake when you bought that god-awful record. But I suppose some things are better left unsaid.